Can you imagine spending money to go out there? This great trip, trip of a lifetime. Here comes Brandon Brooks to see this team play. Airfare. I had a friend who did it. This is an exact quote. Airfare, $800. Per person, hotel, $500. Tickets to the game, $300 per person. Watching your Eagles stink up a Legion Stadium? Priceless. My goodness, a 33-22 loss to the Las Vegas Raiders. We wondered about the point spread, which was three points in favor of the Raiders, then it fell to two, then one by game time. It should have been about 20, for goodness sakes, as the Eagles lose it. And not only was there listless play, not only were there uh, fumbles and there were no interceptions, but the coaching was inexplicable again. And you wonder what this season, the remainder of this season, as Jalen Hurts comes running off the field, you wonder what the remainder of the season is going to look like. Hurts, 18-34, 236, two touchdowns, a passer rating of 94.7, ran the ball for 13 times for 61 yards. What are they going to do? Detroit ended up losing today to the Rams, but they had the Rams down. The Eagles go to Detroit next. Is that two and six? Chargers come here. Is that two and seven? When are they going to get it? There is no, you're not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. By the way, this is the worst they have started since Andy Reid's first year in 1999. But on that team was Donovan McNabb. On that team was Deuce Staley. On that team was Brian Dawkins. On that team, look, there he goes. The boy genius walking off the field. What was that game plan today? They ran the ball to a fairly well on the first possession and scored a touchdown. Eight plays, bang, 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 eight plays, and five of them were runs. And you thought, he's got it. He understands now. Finally, he's got them. Pass, 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 pass. Unless, unless they were, you know, had to end up getting hurts out of the pocket so he didn't get hurts. Um, so, it again, when you look down the line of this, it is really troubling. And when you have to compare to 1999, 1999, Andy Reid's first year, and we know how that turned out pretty darn good in the Super Bowl appearance. I don't know that this is going to turn out beyond this season. There's Boston Scott. Why not use him a little bit more between the tackles? There's Jordan Maialata. Got a little altered gait. A couple of F-bombs walking off the field. He got he got a little work today. He yeah. got he got work. He got smashed. Offensive line got smashed. Defensive line got smashed. You know, when, 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 you're, when the trenches aren't protected, when the trenches aren't playing well, this entire team's going to suffer. And they definitely suffered today by getting their butts whooped up front. Pure point blank. There's no other way to say it. The guys in the trenches Jason got Kelsey. beat up. Yeah. But here's the thing, Barrett. Comment on this as we bring in Barrett Brooks, Ray Dittinger, Seth Joyner, and we bring you Eagles Post Game Live, presented by our friends at Cure Auto Insurance. When you look at what they did on that first possession, and when you look, and you have talked about this, when you are running the ball, you are providing punishment to the defense. You're not getting slapped around like you are when you pass block. It's not the same. There's Lane Johnson coming in, his first game back after missing the last several weeks. He talked about depression. He talked about his, his uh, mental issues, and he said, if uh, you're in that boat, you are not alone. Uh, he, he left the game, though, at the end. We'll find out, hopefully, what the reason was for that. But, Barrett, why not run the ball more when you can provide a little punishment? But they had the game plan. They lined up Jalen Hurst underneath center for the entire first draft. And what happened? They went down and scored. Then, all of a sudden, they come off the next series, and, oh, he pops back up, and he's back in shotgun. We're doing read options. We're, I mean, we're running RPOs again. We're trying to trying to pass the ball instead of running the ball. I mean, it's, it's, it's Jalen Rager coming up. Well, all, it's all a farce, man. Why it's is, all a farce. It was a first round pick. Why is he on the team? I don't get it. And then shotgun. They're on the goal line. They're on the one yard line. They're in shotgun. Bring in Seth Joyner and Ray Dittinger. I don't know your thoughts of this. I can imagine Seth just by the number of times you threw your phone around the content room. Uh, was not a pleasant experience watching this game. I've made an executive decision what is it? on my behalf. You please don't, right? It doesn't include any of you leaving right now. I, I'm just, you know, I'm going to divest my emotions from this Philadelphia Eagles team mm -hmm. because 
Listen, we knew it was going to be a roller coaster ride all season long. Um, we, we, but the intent was a to find out whether Jalen Hurts could be the guy long term, and b to see incremental improvement on this football team. The same things that plagued this football team at the beginning of the year are the same things that plagues this football team as you move through the year. Um, and that's problematic because that tells you that they're not getting any better. Um, so we were talking about it, you know, while we watched the game. You know, I always say what you see on the field is either being coached or it's being tolerated. So when you see the mistakes that are continuously being made, um, that tells me that the coaches, I, I'm not going to go so far as to say the coaches aren't trying to um, rectify them, but when you don't see the improvement, then that tells me that either the coach isn't communicating the way that he needs to communicate where the player understands, or it goes in one, it goes in the player's one ear and out the other, okay? But it also tells me that the coaches believe in what they're doing. Remember the old Joe Banner line, if you keep beating your head against a pole uh, time and again and expect the pole to move, that's the definition of insanity. No, no, I no. paraphrase that. Listen, so I, the I, coaches, I mean, why they didn't listen, continue to run the ball. I, I, I get it 100%, you know, and, and, and I've got all kind of notes over here that I took during the game. With even post-its. With post-its. I mean, and so we can talk about it. You know, we got plenty of time to get into it. You know, from the offensive perspective, you know, you run the football, and I think the only reason they ran the football is because they understood how good this offensive line really was. You had Jordan Malata moving back over to the left side. He's been playing on the right for the last three weeks. You know, so that's problematic because you make that jump and all your techniques and everything is all screwed up. Then you had Lane Johnson come back in, and I posed the question in pregame, you know, mentally, would he be prepared to be the Lane Johnson that we knew? Okay, so you run the ball early to, to kind of keep the pass rush and that pressure under control. It worked. You go down six plays, seven, eight plays, you know, 67-yard touchdown drive. And then you come back the next series and you go right back into the mode of operation that got you to two and four. So can I, you, can you, I just read? Just, 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 just tell me, how does that really make any kind of sense? Yeah. Okay? Why don't you just run those same plays all over again until the Las Vegas Raiders prove to you that they can stop the game plan that you have in place. Like yeah. they did to us. Right. Uh, uh, Ray, I want, I want you to comment, and then afterward, I, I want to read you the play selection from the second series for the Eagles. So remember, eight-play touchdown drive to start it. But, Ray, go ahead. What your, your impressions of this game? Well, I, th I think I'm going to kind of pick up where the where – uh, Barrett and Seth left off. It's, uh, yeah, the first drive, you came out and uh, moved the ball really, really well, really efficiently. And no big surprise, I mean, the Raiders are not a good run defending team. So you figure, well, okay, that's our plan of attack. We're going to come out, we're going to run the ball at them because they haven't shown they could stop a good running game all year. And they did. I mean, you took it right down the field, scored, you got the lead. And, you know, they, they had not scored the first touchdown all year in a game. They had not been ahead in a game where you could be in a position where, okay, we're ahead. We can run the ball now and make them come chase us, right? Everything has fallen into place for you. You've had a good drive. You got the lead. You got control of the game. And then the next possession, you get, and then you get an interception. Now you get the ball back. And all of a sudden, the next thing you know, Jalen Hurts is in a shotgun. He's throwing the ball. And then the next thing you know, it's third and 13. And you got Ngakwe batting the pass down. And now you got to give the ball away again. It makes no sense. I mean, you had established early in the game that you can run the ball, which you already pretty, should have pretty much known going in. And then you totally get away from it. And, look, I don't want to hear, you know, Jalen Hurts' final numbers are. Because all the stuff in the fourth quarter is garbage, okay? Mm -hmm. It's garbage numbers. Speak French. I didn't know. Yes, you like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, it means nothing. I mean, it's what, it was final, the game was over at 30-7. to 7. At, that point, at that point, the Raiders just look at the clock waiting for it to run out. They just want to, you know, go home, get on the strip, have a night, and the game's over. So those fourth quarter numbers mean nothing. What actually does mean something are the, are the possessions by the Raiders. 11 plays, 66 yards. 9 plays, 72 yards. 10 plays, 96 yards. 6 plays, 41 yards, touchdown. 7 plays, 50 yards. 7 plays, 59 yards. All scoring drives. 
Um, sound familiar? That's exactly what happened with the Buccaneers, okay? Sound familiar? It's exactly what happened with Kansas City. I mean, we can talk a lot about the play calling. We can talk a lot about the offensive problems. We can talk endlessly about the bad coaching. But you got, you've got major issues on the defense. You can't stop. You can't stop an NFL offense right now. Your defense is hapless. I think they can't stop a good offense. If you look at the passing numbers of some of the passers that put up against you, Brady, Mahomes, you know, Prescott, and now today, Derek Carr had a career day against your defense. So def the, you got major problems on offense, but you got a defense right now that can't stop anything. Yeah. So let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Out but other than but that, me, Ray, they played well. But let me, tell you, let, let me tell you why, Michael, okay? Th this is why. Th these are the this notes. This is why that what? I, this is why the defense is the way that it is, okay? They're vanilla, and they're extremely stagnant in how they play, okay? They're, they're conservative and passive. They don't blitz. They're so predictable. They, they're predictable um, every single down, every single down, okay? They're either in a four-man front, you know, with coverage behind it, and the guys don't move. They don't give... You know, they don't give you any kind of inclination. When the linebackers line up and the safeties and the corners line up, they line up and they're going to be exactly where they're going to be. And, and the quarterback, when you have elite-level quarterbacks like they faced, you know, you cannot do that because you give away coverage in the pre-snap read. So he knows where he wants to go with the ball right now so we can talk about them not being able to get pressure. But those things kind of work hand-in-hand. Okay, because if a quarterback gets a pre-snap read, he's already made up in his mind where the weakness is and where he's going to attack before he even gets the ball in his hands. Okay, so now, is Jonathan Gannon going to sit back with three coverages and two fronts and think that he's going to stop elite-level defenses, offenses in this league? It's just not going to happen. You know, we, we heard, you know, on the broadcast, you know, oh, he's got to bring some blitzes. He's got to do some things different. Listen, you can scheme up run blitzes. That are just, they're just for the runs, okay? You can scheme up pass blitzes in certain situations to put pressure on the quarterback where you give him one read and one read only, and he better make the right read. Because like they do he, to us. Because if he doesn't, he's on his back, okay? I don't see any of that. So they're, they're extremely vanilla, and, and, they're, and they're really elementary in everything they do. And then when I look at the players, okay, it's always said that players take on the personality of their of their coach okay so if you want to talk about the defensive coach let's look at his personality his play calling is passive he's non-aggressive what are the players what message does that send to the players so they're going to play non-aggressive and passive okay they're te technically they're unsound they go to their five-man line okay and i'm tired of watching denard avery and 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 josh sweat and all of those guys line up with the wrong foot up okay Derek barnett he gets a ball that bounces outside on the run play on the, 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 the touchdown by Josh Jacobs. If he's standing the proper way and he's playing the proper technique, that should be a tackle for a loss. He gets outside of him, touchdown, okay? Then you turn around, you get the same thing with Jannard Avery. He's lined up on the left side with his inside foot back and his outside foot up. So when the play comes, the first thing he's got to do is switch his feet because his feet are in the wrong position. So technically they're unsound. Right. All of these things, okay? That goes, that and and then, then you watch them play. They play uninspired. They don't fly to the ball. They don't hit anybody. Everybody's catching people. You know, it, they don't lay any kind of real hits on people that makes a difference. They don't play aggressive because they're not being coached to play aggressive.